real estate. It's one of the oldest and most reliable type of investment in human history. It continues to be one of the best type of asset class, which provides steady and consistent income. It's not really a hard concept to understand. As populations and businesses grow, especially in big cities, demand for property increases, thus increasing property value and the rent uh, income they provide. So this is great news for us living in this day and age uh, because it's never been easier to invest in real estate thanks to a fantastic invention called REITs uh, which was invented 60 years ago back in 1960. So that's right anybody can now become a property owner uh, without any of the headaches or stress of actually managing a physical property. So not only that but now thanks to ETFs you don't even need to pick and choose individual REITs uh, it's all done for you automatically. So I have searched uh, far and wide for the, the best real estate uh, ETFs out there and I'm pretty sure I found the three best ones. So if you want to own property all over the world and get a consistent stream of passive income without any of the stress or headaches that traditional uh, property owners have, well watch this video to find out how. So REIT stands for Real Estate Investment Trust and it's essentially a collection or a basket of income producing properties. So they could be residential properties like apartment buildings of course, but uh, you could also have commercial buildings like office, retail and industrial, as well as other specialized uh, properties like healthcare. And then there's even mortgage REITs which focus on investing on the actual mortgages. So REITs are some of my favorite stocks because, because of their steady and consistent income that they provide. REITs are actually obligated by law to pay out a certain percentage of their rent income uh, to their shareholders in dividends. So now since they're not technically considered a dividend, uh, which is a, um, a portion of a corporation's profit, they are actually called distribution. So same thing, except they're taxed differently. So I won't get into that in this video, however. So which REITs should you invest in? Well, I own about 15 uh, individual REITs myself and some perform well and some don't. So it could be a challenge to pick and choose individual REITs just like it's a challenge picking and choosing individual stocks. So how do we fix this problem? Well, with an ETF, of course. An ETF is a collection or a basket of stocks all included in just one fund, just like a mutual fund. So the advantage of an ETF is that it eliminates the need for you to pick and choose individual individual stocks and the same exact things thing sorry goes for REITs there are ETFs out there that hold a basket of REITs so easy just got even easier so I've been hunting down REIT type ETFs for a while now and I analyzed a bunch of them and I could comfortably say that uh, with only owning these three ETFs which you probably never heard of, uh, you will not only get a consistent and safe stream of income every month but you will be diversified in terms of property type and also geographic region. So that's right, you could become a real estate mogul just like Donald Trump. So let's go through my top three REIT ETFs one by one. All right, so my first pick and the most important pick, I would say, is the Middlefield REIT Index Plus ETF. So the stock symbol is IDR. If you would ask me if I only had to choose one REIT ETF, this would be the one. So if we scroll down, we could see some information here. Um, let's first look at the geographic allocation. So you have 59% Canada, 39% US, 2% international. And then the sector uh, breakdown you see here, it's 27% uh, or the bulk of it is industrial REITs, 18% uh, residential REITs and so forth and so forth. So a really nice diversification um, and a primary focus on industrial and residential. Um, if you, you could see the top 10 holdings here, but we'll look at that more in just a second. Um, I want to look at the, uh, the distribution, so uh, the dividends. So if, if we go back to 2016, you could see they are, they are all at 6.5 cents. 17, 2017, 6.5, 2018, same thing. But in 2019, they increased the dividend starting in May. 
uh, to 7.5 cents so a really nice big jump and also you have here on the last day of the year a special distribution or kind of like a bonus distribution of 13 cents which is almost equal to two of the uh, regular distribution so really really cool and in 2020, uh, we're still at 7.5 cents, so very, very steady. Uh, and as you can see, the, the distributions have already been declared uh, for the rest of the year. So if we compare them just real quickly to two very popular ETFs, uh, the Vanguard and the iShares one, so the Vanguard Canadian REIT ETF, um, if we look at it here, you could see that um, it only has Canada. Uh, it's uh, it's capped, which means it's a, it's an index. It follows the uh, the read the TSX read index. So you will have more uh, per, uh, allocation to the bigger read. So you have them all here. Here's the breakdown, and it's very similar to the iShares. Um, ETF, which uh, by the way, the Vanguard stock symbol was VRE and the iShares one is XRE. So I just want to compare IDR to the two biggest or most popular ones. And if we look at the dividend yield, very interesting. Uh, VRE has 5.94% annual yield right now. XRE has 5.65 and look at IDR, it has 6.82, so a much higher dividend yield. And if we look at IDR, like we saw before, it's very well diversified. You have some Canada, you have some US, so much more diversified in terms of region. So this would be my number one pick. Now, if you're asking, well, where is Rio Can? Where is Smart Centers H&R? Well, I found the uh, complete listing uh, of the um, IDR is read so as you could see uh, you didn't see it in the top 10 but Rio can is here uh, it's number 14 you also have uh, smart centers H&R as well as all the really big uh, REITs important REITs in Canada choice is there Northview apartment a really good residential one so in terms of diversification uh, there's no comparison IDR wins any day of the week so in summary, I really love this ETF for four reasons. Number one, you're well diversified in terms of region. I love Canada, but I feel better knowing uh, it's more diversified compared to the two ETFs we just saw with some significant exposure in the US. Reason number two, it's well diversified in terms of property type. So as we saw, it focuses on industrial and residential properties, which are the safest type of properties and have the most potential to grow in the future, especially industrial, which includes warehouses that uh, e-commerce companies need to run their operations. And we all know that online shopping is on the rise. Number three, you have some active management with this ETF combined with indexing. So the index in question is the TSX REIT index. So this ETF will automatically include some of the best and biggest REITs in Canada. The fact that it's half index and half actively managed is a perfect balance, which keeps the management fee fairly low at 0.6%. Plus, you know, it's being managed by a really uh, reliable asset manager. And number four, a higher dividend yield compared to uh, the two popular ETFs we saw, the Vanguard and the iShares one. And we also saw that there's a strong possibility of getting dividend increases, uh, as well as uh, once in a while, a special distribution or a bonus distribution. So uh, combine these four factors together and you have, in my opinion, the best real estate ETF on the TSX that you can buy and hold forever. So pick number two is the Harvest Global REIT Leaders Income ETF. Um, it's managed by Harvest, one of my favorite uh, managers, uh, asset managers. The stock symbol is HGR. And the special thing about this um, ETF is that it's specifically designed um, to give Canadians more real estate exposure outside of Canada. So you could uh, see that clearly if we look at the geographic breakdown. You have United States 55%, some uh, United Kingdom. Them, Australia 10%, Germany, Singapore, Spain, and some France. So you have nothing in Canada here. So it's a really cool way for Canadians to get exposure to uh, global real estate out of um, out of Canada. So uh, the current dividend yield for this ETF is still is pretty good, not as high as IDR, but really good at 6.76%. It's a bit lower now. 
uh, because this is slightly outdated. And the thing, uh, another thing I like about this REIT uh, ETF is that it uses a covered call strategy. So it generates a little bit more income on top of the REITs itself by, by selling covered calls, which is just uh, fantastic. If you've seen my videos, you know that I'm a huge fan of um, the covered call strategy. So another cool thing I want to mention is that Harvest uh, are known for their consistent distributions. They always keep the same distributions usually. So nothing is more true than this one here. Um, so in this ETF came out in 2017 and the, the distribution, which is monthly, has not changed since then. So it's 4.6 cents in 2017 and it continues to be 4.6 cents. So a really good way for us Canadians to get exposure to real estate outside of Canada. My third and final pick is the super dividend REIT ETF from Global X. So the stock symbol is SRET, S-R-E-T, but just keep in mind, this is a US listed stock. So this ETF, um, like it says here in the summary, it invests in 30 of the highest dividend yielding REITs globally. So simply amazing, what a great concept. They just choose 30 of the highest yielding uh, ones. So it has global exposure. If we open the fact sheet, we could quickly see that um, if you see the breakdown here. So there's 80% in the US, so a big portion in the US, but you also have Singapore, South Africa, Canada, and Australia. Also, if you look at the breakdown, a majority of it is in mortgage REITs. So a, a great way to get exposure to mortgage REITs, which the two previous ETFs that I discussed don't have that much. So I really like this read because um, I think it's really undervalued right now and it has a really good dividend yield. So if we look at the, the, uh, the distribution yield right now, it's 8.51%, but the 12 month trailing yield, that's the average of the last 12 months is enormous at 11.2. So you might be wondering what's the discrepancy. Well, if you actually look at the distribution calendar, you could actually see uh, why uh, the, the the numbers are like that so at the beginning of the year bef when everything was fine and dandy before COVID hit us they were giving consistent um, 10 cent uh, distributions uh, or very close to that uh, the year before and the year before etc etc but as you could see it went from 10 cents to 6.5 cents and right now it's holding pretty steady at 5.75 so you might be thinking well why would I get this read well if we look at the one year chart this is why so this uh, st stock is was normally before COVID a fifteen dollar stock, and right now it's at eight dollars and forty six cents. So it's it's hugely discounted, and that's why you're getting such a good uh, dividend yield if you invest in it right now. But keep in mind that once everything comes back to normal and the dividends uh, go back to ten cents, it means you will double your dividend yield. So next year or two years from now, let's say the dividends go back to ten cents, and you buy the stock right now. Well, you're not getting 8.5% dividend yield. You'll get double that, almost at 20, which is absolutely enormous. We could actually see from the graph of one month that it's starting to pick up uh, because of uh, the Pfizer's latest announcement for the vaccine. So this, uh, I'm pretty sure, will come back to normal given enough time. A really, really good pickup right now. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is that this is a U.S. listed stock, which means uh, the dividends or the distributions you get will be taxed 15% um, by the IRS. So you don't have to worry about doing it yourself or paying it yourself. It's taken off the top automatically. But in my opinion, 15, losing 15% 15 uh, on 8.5, it still gives you a really good dividend. And a quick trick, if you want to avoid that 15% tax, uh, there is a way you invest in it with your RRSP. So if for those of you that don't know, it's a hack I learned recently. Anything in uh, in your RRSP, including US listed stocks, you do not have to pay that 15% withholding tax simply because it's considered a retirement account. If it would be in a cash account or even in the TFSA account, you would have to pay that 15%. So SRET, a really good um, third pick here, really good global exposure and uh, as you saw from the one year chart great potential in the future from not only uh, stock price appreciation but dividend uh, increases as well
So there you have it guys, all you need to be a hands-off landlord and own property all over the world are these three ETFs. Can it get easier than this? I don't think so. Uh, buy, buy and hold these three ETFs collect the passive income every single month until you die and then you could pass down your shares uh, to your kids and so on and so on until well judgment day comes and the machines take over it's that simple so don't give in to the pressure guys of your parents or society to buy a house it's pure nonsense if you ask me you won't own the house the house will own you trust me first time home uh, buyers are simply not aware of the headaches the stress and challenges owning your own property can have i'm not saying it's bad or wrong to own your own home all i'm saying is that there is a much better way nowadays uh, which gives you a much more time and flexibility which simply equals more freedom so please hit that like button i would really appreciate it guys and make sure you're subscribed most of the viewership i get uh, on my channel are from people who are not subscribed to my channel so trust me you don't want to miss out on my future content i got a lot more videos coming up on investing ideas which could help you um, have a better life so you don't want to miss out on any of it also make sure to follow us on instagram uh, for additional posts on our journey my mission remains the same it's to help everyday working canadians to build a stream of passive income to enhance their quality of life and eventually reach that ultimate goal of financial freedom so with that take care everyone stay safe and see you next time